Right, what we've got here is a Black & Decker mouse. It's a detail sander, and actually when you get one that's working, it's pretty cool. But unfortunately, they do have a little bit of a production error in some of the runs that they did, and the fuse on the board actually keeps blowing. Do you use it, and you'll see it go bang. <clears throat> now, I clearly have an option with this. I could have taken it back and have it replaced, because I've only been using it for a couple of days. However, when you buy this thing, it says proudly on the box, 13,000 RPM. 13,000 RPM is an awful lot of RPM, so you've got to think, haven't you? Wouldn't that be useful? And the reason that's useful is because it's run on a 240 volt supply. So when I put 240 volts in there, I get 13,000 RPM, which means I'm getting around about 54 RPM per volt. So just divide one by the other and it gives us the motor constant. Equally then, if I'm able to turn that at 54 RPM, which is really slow, we'll get a volt out of it. Now I should be able to turn that somewhere between 100 and 200 RPM by hand, so I should get somewhere in the region of 5 volts out of that. So that's really interesting, obviously. So let's take it apart and have a look at the inside. There we go. There's a little DC motor sitting right there, which is very interesting. So we can have that DC motor out of there. And we've got a whole bunch of other things, obviously. We've got a rectifier circuit right there. We've got a nice on-off switch there, but it's the motor that we're interested in at this stage. So let's pull that motor out. And that is the motor that's got that volt to RPM ratio. So we can use that directly as a generator. All we really need to do is drive this off. And it's about a four millimeter shaft, so we can put that in the vise and drive that rotation head off. Okay, now I've got the motor out, of course I need to join to it. Now I've actually filed a little flat spot there, and what I've found is that these things, which are terminal blocks, actually make awesome couplers to these small motors. And um, this is a three amp, which is two millimeters diameter, that's a five amp, three millimeters diameter, it's a 15 amp, it's four millimeters diameter, and a 30 amp is six millimeters diameter. And what's great about them is it fits exactly on here, and we have a screw to tighten it on. So I've soldered one onto a bit of bent bar and I've put a thread on the end of the bar that then just slots on there you line up the flat spot put the screw back in and you've got yourself a nice motor couple I attached to the motor and I put this arm on with a plumb bob wedge if I give that a spin this will generate I think this is hilarious actually I've attached it to a 12 volt LED lighting strip there and if I give that a spin I just think that's awesome, actually, to be honest. So we've got a kind of um, twirly generator, I suppose, that's got enough power, certainly, to light that lamp. Now, I know it's actually around about 5 or 6 volts and about 20 milliamps that it's producing when it's under load. But I thought that was a cute thing, actually, and well worth showing you, and it demonstrates what I've been talking about when we talk about speed of rotation and the um, volts required to run a motor and how that will give you the volt output when you spin it up as a Although generator. Although we're using this motor from a detail sander, to be honest, the motor from a hand blender would work just as well. If you remember, we bought a hand blender for five pounds at the local supermarket, opened it up and it had a 240 volt DC motor that was rated around about eight to 10,000 RPM. So that would be awesome if you don't have happen to have uh, something like a detail sander, then it's still a project that can be done really quite anyway, simply. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> awesome! <laughs>